my dad, and my grandmother too, particularly my dad, had lung cancer. He had some kidney stuff too. It spread to his brain, and that's what got it. And I just wanted to say two hey, things about that. Put the mic in your mouth. Yeah. Let me say two things about that. Number one, young people, older people, men and women, don't smoke. I've seen the end of the story. It's not a pretty one. I buried him, we buried him, a week after his 60th birthday. I miss him every day. And the people who know me will understand Ron Victor. Say one other thing. I particularly miss him during kind of this time of year when Alabama has a big win. I, I can't call my dad and share like we used to. But I also want to share a praise for two things, but one for him. But through that whole process, I can, I can live with live, losing my dad physically, but he found God, he found Jesus, and I'm confident that I will see him again. Now, one other praise I want to throw with you is through my good friend, Larry. Larry had cancer. He still has it. Uh, he had some type of brain issue. Uh, that was a skin thing or something to where he needed treatment down in Gainesville a couple of years ago. And he <coughs> handled that very, very, very well. But about a month and a half ago, about, about three weeks, three months ago, he had throat cancer. And he went through the radiation and all that. And about a month and a half ago, I got a call that he's in hospice. He's in the hospice house, specifically. Well, I want to testify to the power of prayer. Amen. Because he went in, I think, on a Tuesday. On Friday afternoon, he went home. Wow. He didn't go home to the Lord. He went home, home. I don't know of too many people that left the hospice house through the front door. And he did. Continue to pray for him, but I want to praise God. And I was real thrilled too that last week, or last this this week, went to my train meeting and Larry gave his treasures report just like Larry had always given. And I was so thrilled that he's still here and still doing well. Thank you. Davis when they uh, 
were taking me into surgery. And you know, you would think that I would have been nervous, but I wasn't. I was not afraid at all because I just knew that everything was going to come out all right. And it did. Um, my uh, surgeon said that he thought he had gotten all the tumor and that I probably did not need to go through chemotherapy. And of course, the uh, cancer doctor wanted me to have chemo and I opted out because that's terrible. And, um, <laughs> well, I think it kills as many people as it happens. So here I am, uh, and it's all to God's glory. Amen. Amen. Um, come January the 3rd, I will celebrate five years of being free. she did say, well, um, that you need to know that the probability of her lung cancer is because of secondhand smoke. She's not smoked. It came from somebody else. Next, we have Iris Morgan coming to share with us. Yeah, I'd like to just stand here okay. without the mic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to talk loud enough for everybody can hear me. Amen. <laughs> Can you hear me in the back? Uh, I was diagnosed, as many of you know, with uh, breast cancer in February. Um, since that time, I have been through a myriad of tests. I went through the chemo that is awful, you know. Not as bad as it could have been, quite frankly, but it still uh, had its challenges. Um, you know, I went through surgery. <laughs> And I'm uh, about 50% through with the radiation, uh, which I'm very pleased to be that far along. And hopefully, if everything goes well, uh, November 6th, election day, is when my uh, radiation will be finished. Uh, and my hair should be coming back. They keep telling me that. It's not. But it should be coming back. You look great. <laughs> but I didn't get to go blonde. Oh. <laughs> I had that, that red hair with a temper that matched it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, does the blonde help? Is it the blonde is helping you. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, But anyway, during that entire time, God has uh, been with me. Amen. And uh, yeah, sometimes he's just been right there walking with me. Sometimes he's been carrying me. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's been, I know I wouldn't be where I am today without him. And it was interesting because right about the time that I was diagnosed with cancer, I saw a sign on one of the local churches. And it was so fitting because it said, don't tell God how big the storm is. You tell the storm how big your God is. Because uh, he can overcome and any of the challenges that we face. It may not be cancer that you face. I mean, there are many other challenges that are, are worse than cancer, I'm sure, although I think it's the worst right now. But I know there are many challenges. God can be right there with you if you ask Him to help you through it. He's ready, willing, and able to step you through. So that's my testament. I can tell you. I've, been there, done that, I haven't always done what he wanted, but he's, he's always done what I want. I can assure you. Amen. Praise God. I thought I had it under control to tell this story to be saying, so I, I may cry again. Um, I was 48, which is young, to be diagnosed with colon cancer because colon cancer is more slow growing cancer mm -hmm. with no symptoms so the time you're diagnosed it's pretty far gone um, and I went through all the staging had the big abdominal surgery and Sarah and I were waiting several days afterwards for them to come in and tell us you know how far it had gone 
And I came in and said that, they call it leaves the capsule, whatever that means, which was warranting chemotherapy, so then we had to wait on the cancer doctor. And he came in and laid out all these statistics of what should happen. And the bottom line was, I wasn't a candidate for the chemo surgery because I had a lot of other health issues going on. So we basically left us with no options, but we, we did have an option that was God. So we stood on God's promises, which was at that point, we claimed James with the scripture that says, Call upon the elders of the church, no for those that are sick. So our pastor came and we prayed. And we did have a treatment plan laid out for me. And I had a wonderful cancer doctor who followed me vigilantly, and a GI doctor. And let me tell you, we've had more colonoscopies than I would ever want to mention. <laughs> I had them every six months. For and I was when I was 48, I'm 60 now. I would say I've probably been cancer free for six years now. Um, I had my last colonoscopy two years ago. They finally let me go to, at that point, I think I'd finally gone two years. And the cancer doctor came in the room, he's really gotten to know, I mean, the GI doctor, he's really gotten to know Terry and I. He came in the room after the colonoscopy, he stood at the bottom of the bed. And he looked at us and he smiled and he said, he went, touchdown! <laughs> <laughs> I think we finally beat this thing. So he told us we could go four years and here I am standing here and I believe I'm a miracle because colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States for men and women. I encourage anybody to follow through with their scope when you hit 50 and any symptom your body's giving you, go for it. <laughs> Be proactive. And I, God saved my life, I believe it. And he was there with us through it all and it's been a struggle and I praise his name. I, I give him the glory. Amen. Jason's song, and uh, she may have a story to tell. Three years ago in March 2009, not to go through the details, but there was a time when Doug and Carolyn Mills had come back and he had filled in that Sunday morning, and I made a phone call from Hinton, West Virginia. I was there because my mother has just gone through uh, breast cancer, and that's when I had spoken here to a surprised uh, former pastor and uh, we were wanting to honor him in a special way about the gymnasium as well. And uh, so that happened just three years ago. And I wanted to ask you, it happened so quickly and time passes so fast. If you have somebody, if it's you, if you have experienced cancer, could you stand for a moment? I need you to stand, Mother. If you have personally experienced it, if you have a family member who's experienced it, would you stand? Now, don't you just take a quick look. Susie's right. All these ladies, right. David's right. They were one of the one who shared today. They're right. It's affecting all of us. If you have a friend who's been affected by cancer and has broken your heart that way, would you stand? It's probably 100% of the people in this room today who have had a time of connection somehow to cancer. And April was so right. We so many times tell, oh God, my storm is so big. But we need to tell the storm how big our God is. Amen. Amen. Can I pray with you just for a moment before Pamela shares with us today? Father God, we thank you this day for the victory that we have in Christ Jesus by the power of God through your Holy Spirit. We give you glory for what you're telling us through these lives who have been victorious overcomers of cancer. The world is full of cancer, but there are folks in this room today that speak victory, and we'd say so because of you making a difference in their lives. Were you not a difference in the other people's lives? Yes, you were. 
Sometimes it goes so far progressed that, Lord, the healing they have is just to be with you. Lord, we thank you so much that one day we will be, re we be reunited with our loved ones who have passed on because of this cruel cancer. Father, we pray now your blessings on Pamela as she ministers to us in song. And Lord, the rest of the service, it's all for your glory. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray these things. Amen. Amen. I'm wearing pink because I am a seven-month survivor of cancer. Amen. Praise God. And um, my sister is also 48, and she was diagnosed with colon cancer. And then my mother's husband has multiple myeloma bone cancer. But it's all due to our God, Amen. our faithful God, Amen. that we can say that we're survivors. Amen.
Oh! 